Dear students, today we discuss the novel Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. This is the second novel of Rushdie and it was a turning point in the history of Indian English novel. This novel is unique in its narrative, use of language and the treatment of the post-colonial experience. I have prepared this video with 30 slides. Hope you remember the significance of the number 30 in the novel. For example, Salim Sina is 30 years old when he starts narrating the story. It is also significant that the novel begins in 1915 and ends in 1977, narrating the story of India 30 years before independence and 30 years after. Let's have a look at the novel. It was published in 1981 and it won the prestigious Booker Prize in the same year. In 1993, it was selected for the Booker of Bookers and in 2008 as Best of Booker. This novel has in fact inaugurated the post-colonial or post-modern moment in Indian English literature. The title of the novel refers to those children who were born on the midnight of August 15, 1947 the same moment India became an independent country. This is why Selim Sinai claims that he was fathered, you understand, by history. In the story, 1001 children were born on the midnight of 1947. Rashti has selected the curious number so that his story has connections with the Arabian Nights. These children are gifted with the highest of talents. For example, Selim Sinai he is gifted with telepathic skills so that he is described as an all in the radio a kind of communication center for all the 1001 children this novel is divided into three books in book one Salim Sinai narrates the events from 1915 till his birth in 1947 he begins by describing his grandfather Adam as his return from Germany and his life in Kashmir. In the second book, he recounts various events of his childhood and adolescence till the death of his parents. Now again, this coincides with the end of Nehruvian regime at the national level. Book 3 portrays the disintegration of Salim Sinai as well as the newly emerged nation. Here are some of the major themes in the novel. First of all, the novel blurs the boundary between the historical and the individual, the private and the public, and historical events are experienced at the individual level. In other way around, history is in fact taken as autobiography. In a stunning way, this novel has presented the complexity of the post-colonial experience of the newly emerging nations. The story in fact talks about the post-independent experiences of these nations and the kind of disintegration that is set into it. The novel is set in colonial India and it also records the moment of independence and brilliantly portrays what happens to post-colonial societies after independence. Right from the beginning, this novel presents the fragmentation and exile experienced by post-colonial subjects. It also dramatizes the crisis of identity in the new nations. We will go into the details of these themes right now. One of the peculiarity of the novel is its narration of historical events experienced at the personal level. It is clear from Salim Sinai's description that they are trapped by history. He says it, they are mysteriously handcuffed to history and for the next three decades there was no escape. His story is the history of free India. Throughout the novel, historical events are narrated as parcel experiences. Let us consider how certain parcel experiences resonate at the historical level. For example, Adam Aziz, the grandfather of Salim Sinai, returns to Kashmir from Germany in 1915. During this period, he hits his nose and he loses his faith in religion. In 1919, 
Aziz with his wife Nazim travelled to Agra and during the journey he have had a first hand experiences of the Jallian Wala Bagh massacre. For the readers of the novel, 1915 is the year of Adam Aziz's return to India. But for the historians of the nation, 1950 is the year Gandhi returns to India. In the same way, the Jallian Wala Bagh massacre which has infuriated the Indian public has been clubbed into a personal anecdote of Adam Aziz's journey to Agra. In the book 2 of the novel, Salim Sinai narrates one of his childhood experiences in which he was playing with a bicycle and eventually he caused a riot. In a similar way, the Midnight's children were subjected to sterilization by the government in 1975. While readers are concerned about various childhood experiences of Salim Sinai, this also parallels with the history of the nation. For example, in Book 2, it is said that Salim caused a riot. This riot is in fact the language riots of 1956, which was a result of the State Reorganization Act. In a similar way, the novel talks about the sterilization of Midnight's children in 1975. That also refers to the emergency of 1975 to 1977, where individual freedom was curtailed. This is an example of Rushdie's way of combining the historical and the individual. This is how Adam Aziz, the grandfather, experiences Jali and Balabagh massacre. As Brigadier Dyer issues a command, the sneeze hits my grandfather. So the command of Brigadier Dyer is reflected in the sneeze of the grandfather, full in the face. Yo, he sneezes and falls forward, thereby saving his life. So the command given by Dyer is reflected in the sneeze of the grandfather. There are so many such moments in the novel. For example, in 1974, Shiva moves to live with Parvati the witch. The same year, India explored the first nuclear test bomb. In a similar way, Salim Sinai's son Adam was born on 25th June 1975. And it is the same day that emergency is declared for the first time in India. Now let us look at the novel from a post-colonial point of view. The concept of nation and nationality has have been seriously contested by post-colonial critics. In one sense, nation in fact create an imaginary community. On the other hand, the concept of nation and nationality is a colonial imposition and the grand narratives of nation often sidelines the heterogeneous communities that existed in the colonies. Rashidi has attempted to bring the plurality of the nation. In fact, by selecting 1001 kids, he was in fact catering into the multi multiple identities that existed in India and was in fact bringing all these voices into the center so that the myth of a nation was dismantled. The novel is a satire on the nationalist discourse and he attempts to place minor identities into the frame of nation. The novel also records the disillusionment of the people and the gradual disintegration of the new nations. The novel also records political uncertainty and the cultural displacement people experience. The rise of Shiva as a war hero and the rise of autocratic powers lead to the fall of the united dream of a nation. In the novel, William Methworld stands for the colonial administration and he evokes a sense of perfection and order. He is upset to see that the colonial mansion is filled with junks and he wishes to hand over the perfect, glorious colonial mansion to the new occupants. This novel is about exile. Salim is a homeless wanderer and he is continuously shifted from one place to another. His exile begins with the moment he lost the, ho the moment he lost the home of Vanida and Vivili Wingle, 
from his very birth. In another instance, Salim's blood group is revealed and his parents realize that he is not their son and he was sent away to the house of his uncle Hanif and aunt Pia. In a third instance, the Sinai family moves from Bombay to Karachi and he is separated from the city he loved very much. The first chapter of the novel is titled The Perforated Sheet and this novel talks about the fragmentation of individuals, cultures, landscapes as well as nations. All characters in the novel are fragmented beings. His grandfather Adam Aziz confesses to having a permanent hole the size of a melon inside him. In fact, he described himself as a half and halfer. The images of fragmentation, either it's a whole or a half, highlight his predicament as a person who has fallen between two stools having been exposed to two very different cultures, the Indian and the Western. In other way around, right in from the case of his grandfather Azam Aziz to, the, to his sister Jamila Singer, they are continuously subjected to fragmentation. The fragmentation also happens at the national level that India is partitioned into Pakistan. Similarly, Pakistan is further partitioned into Bangladesh and Pakistan. Salim's body is equated to that of the nation and just like nation is being fragmented, Salim's body is also lopped off from a finger to his sexual organ. In the same vein, families fragment, marriages break up. So in as a whole, this novel is about fragmented selves, cultures, nations, families, marriages, bodies, etc. Identity of the characters and the nation is a key concern in the novel and identity can never be defined. Salim himself claims that reality is a question of perspective and he self-reflectively questions the very source of his own authenticity. One of the striking features of the novel is its narrative. It has a non-linear narrative. It follows the narrative of Arabian Nights as well as Indian epics like Mahabharata where it follows an episodic character. Following the Eastern traditions, this story is being told instead of being written off. Salim Sina is the narrator of the story and Patma is a listener. Critics have commented that historical events narrated in the novel are inaccurate. It is a common allegation against novels based on historic incidents. Even the novel like God of Small Things was criticized for being historically inaccurate. Whenever this question of historic inaccuracy is hinted at, Rashdi answers that it is based on memory and memory cannot be linear, it cannot follow a chronological pattern. In the novel, Salim says, memory is truth because memory has its own special kind. It selects, eliminates, alters, exaggerates, minimizes, glorifies and vilifies also. But at the end it creates its own reality, its heterogeneous but usually coherent version of events and no sane human being ever trusts someone else's version more than his own. In this way, Rashdi weaves the story relying on the memory of the central character and he is unapologetic about it. Use of Indian English and a hybridized form of English is a unique feature of Salman Rushdie's work. Even though there are so many other post-colonial writers who have experimented with the language use, Rushdie has succeeded to create a, a, a new language in which the Indian and the English experiences find coexistence. It is also interesting to see that Rashdi uses British English for his upper class characters and English with Indian variation for his lower class characters. In this example, Patma, the listener, is cajoling Salim Sinai, the narrator, to have food. Let's see the kind of language that Patma uses. In this example, her use of eat na, food is spoiling, and starve, starve, who cares, two pies, are in fact colloquial usage of the word.
it is used without giving any additional descriptions this is what rashti has to say about the way language is being used in midnight's children i found i had to punctuate it in a very peculiar way i had to use dashes too much keep exclaiming putting in three dots sometimes three dots followed by semicolons followed by three dashes that sort of thing just to seem to help it to dislocate the english and let other things into it deshani does that all the time in hatter ever since the publication of midnight's children rashdi was equi compared with marquis or grander grass and their use of magic realism he fuses the realistic narrative with fantasy magic legends myths and in fact produces a wonderful piece of art this extraordinary feature of the novel is made possible by employing a narrator and narrative patma is a very curious narrator where she accept magical fantasy elements without blinking on the other hand when certain everyday reality is being narrated she rejects it and uh, there are moments when patma leaves she refuses to listen to the story anymore at other time she come back in that way rashti succeeds in blending fantasy and realism this is the novel that inaugurates the postmodernist narrative strategy in indian english literature in it is narrative form it is connection with other texts like arabinites or the indian storytelling traditions like ramayana or mahabharata its characterization and the notion of identity fragmentation and its rejection of grand narratives either of the colonial or the national in this way this novel has placed indian english novel within the canon of world literature there are so many other issues to be discussed we will have an interactive session after you have, all of you have watched this video we also have to look at uh, the criticism placed on rashdi's work for example there are critics who suggest that he has followed the oriental stereotypes of uh, types on india and similarly his representation of women is politically incorrect we will look at this and other issues in the discussion thanks a lot